Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Marvel Legends Compound Hulk figure. I think this was a Walmart exclusive. I know I got mine at walmart.com, and I must have done that for a reason, because I tried to not do that. I don't like their website very much. Anyway, uh, it must have been that. I think that well, it was that. And this is basically just a repaint of the Red Hulk. And in some ways that's a good thing, and in other ways it's a really bad thing that's very annoying. And we're going to talk about all of that. There's definitely some cool stuff going on here, but there's some stuff that's really annoying considering the fact that we've gotten this mold other than a different head a bunch of different times now. I think there's some uh, inexcusable flaws with this figure. So let's go ahead and get into that by getting him off the stand and taking a closer look. Uh, this guy stands just about, let's say, eight and a half inches, and that's going to make him pretty close to just shy of 22 centimeters. And before we get into the rest of the review, let's do a quick question of the day. Are you into this sort of thing? I know Compound Hulk is a thing, but are you into it? It's a very out there sort of design for Hulk. It's a very out there sort of story from what I know. And it's it's definitely, um, I would rank it among the gimmicky things that we see in comics, but maybe some people are really into this. So you guys can let me know. Okay, so let's talk about the aesthetic. I'm gonna address the problem in a minute, but first I wanna talk about the good stuff. The paintwork for the two-tone is actually really well done. It, it looks like it's molded, both colors, and it can't be. Right here we can see a little glimpse of red plastic poking through, which means they did a really good job painting the green on top of the red. And red is harder to paint than green, so that makes sense. The line is nice and clean going straight down his torso. You can see it on his face and on his body. It lines up, it's not absolutely perfect, but it's pretty damn good. That's a, that's a difficult thing to do on a sculpted figure. I mean, it's not just a flat surface. So that's difficult and they pretty much nailed it. He does have shading throughout. Oh, before I get even to that, the painted green matches the molded green over here and the molded red of different plastics match too. So that's nice. Uh, the head also, the different colors match fairly well. He's a little glossy here and there, but that's okay. The purple pants, black pants, it's all done really well. The red paint in here is a little glossy and doesn't look great, but it's not bad. And then we have, I believe that's just green plastic behind there, but still, it looks nice. Now, as far as the shading goes, we do have shading pretty much everywhere. The pants, it's super subtle and basically impossible to notice, but it is there. Then we do have it on the red and the green. Um, it is done with tampography, which is not great. You can see it's kind of like a neon green on top of the other neon green. And, but you can see like some hard lines here, which is annoying. I really wish they would have done airbrush work on the shoulder. I don't know if it's gonna show up for you guys because this is such a, this color is bouncing light back at the camera like you wouldn't believe. Canon cameras tend to be a little bit weird with green and this is apparently the kind of green that it doesn't like. But maybe you can see it anyway. The, it looks like a fingerprint because of the way the tampography does the dots. It doesn't look great. It's kind of like a curvy line all over the place up here. Same thing over here though. The red shading is a much is much more subtle. We do have it everywhere. Abs, chest, arms, hands, head, feet, legs. Everything has shading. We even have some on the back, which is really nice though. It's all scratched to crap on mine. Doesn't look great, but we have shading. That's very nice, but it should have been airbrushed in my opinion. It would have looked better. I'm sure it's a cost thing or they would have done it for some reason, so it's whatever. But it does look good. I'll take this shading over no shading any day. I think airbrush shading would have looked better is all, but hey, that's the way it goes. Now, as far as the face goes, this is what really grinds my gears. This is a Red Hulk head just repainted. Look at the packaging they showed us. What do you guys notice? One side of his head looks like Red Hulk. One side of his head looks like Green Hulk. We don't have that. Look at the hair on this side. Look at the hair on this side. We don't have that. We have just a repainted Red Hulk head here. That really bothers me. It wasn't even a good Red Hulk sculpt as far as I'm concerned, but at least give us new hair. At least do the same head but new hair so that one side of the hair is down, one side of the hair is up so that it looks like Compound Hulk. I've always known him to have two different hairstyles because it's Green Hulk and Red Hulk. I've never seen it like this. Maybe it does come like this, but it doesn't come like this on the packaging and it is a pure repaint. So at least give us a hair, a new hair piece, if not a whole new head. So that does bother me a lot, but it is good enough. The shading on the eyes, it's good enough. Uh, you get more of the dark around the cheekbone and eye socket rather than actually in the eye socket because of the way it's on there. So it definitely could be a much better paint job, but it's good enough and the mouth looks okay and the eye looks okay. So it's fine, but not being a new head sculpt and no new hair sculpt, making it a pure repaint, that really bugs me. 
that really bugs me and i get that these hulks are getting repainted left and right and it makes sense for the most part but you have to kick us back a little bit of those profits in added value that's my stance on it and i think that's probably what most people would agree with so the aesthetic isn't anywhere near as good as it could be but it's still pretty good and we did get some shading on there so i'll give it an eight out of ten that's a pretty good rating but it could have been a nine if they gave us a split head like come on it's it's compound hulk that's like it's two different hulks give us the two different heads on, on one a, a half and half do that please please effort Okay, as far as accessories go, we don't even have all the usual accessories. We have the two fist hands and the two open hands. Five out of ten. Lazy, lazy profit making repaint. And I don't mind them making profits on repaints, but you got to give us something. I'm going to stick to that. Okay, as far as articulation goes, we'll run this quickly since we've seen it before. It's very limited articulation for the neck. You would think it has pretty good range, but it doesn't actually have that much range. It's better than not having range. He can lean, that's good. Obviously he can rotate. He can move up and down. It's enough, it's definitely enough. But the way it's done, it doesn't have that much range. It's okay. Shoulders, still big shoulders, little connection. So it does get a little peanutty, a little weird looking. But you can get them up that far, which isn't all the way. And you do get the lump down here. So bigger shoulder would have worked better than half a big shoulder and then a lump. You do get your full rotation. Butterfly joint still goes all the way back, which is semi-useful but not going forward does obviously limit the usefulness because there's no forward at all. So that, that sucks. Bicep swivel is just a floating bicep on here. So you're actually gonna get your bicep swivel out of the elbow joint, like it's a single hinged elbow because it is, but this will move with it. So that's pretty good. I like that, that'll do. Not a good way to do double jointed elbows on a big guy like this. So I'll take a 90 degree bend on a big hulky guy. That's okay. That's fine. Wrists have a swivel and a hinge. Still looks like the hands could be bigger to me and they still have extra gap in the wrist. So yeah, I would definitely prefer they just scale up the hands like 5%. Hulk having big hands is not a bad thing, especially given how this guy's like square shaped. They're, this particular Hulk mold that they have made and they keep reusing is very square shaped. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very square shaped. So bigger hands would help that look a lot. This makes his hands look fairly small. His hands are smaller than his forearms. I don't know, I tend to think of Hulk as having really big, meaty hands, and he doesn't really, so that kind of sucks. All right, ab crunch, or diaphragm joints, I should say, does go back, they did continue the paint job, obviously, that's nice. It does go forward, that's good. Yeah, they did a good job with the paint on this guy. Leaning side to side still works, no problems there. Very nice. You do get rotation at the top, but be super careful, so maybe just focus on the waist twist. I know it's not the best looking thing, but it's better than scratching the paint. And you don't get that much anyway because he's very oblong, so you don't have much rotation. For the hips, they still don't have any range, but we haven't tweaked this at all apparently. They go back a little bit. Going forward sucks, unless you want them really far out to the side. So his posability is still very limited. Now going out to the side works nicely. It's as good as you would expect for somebody this bulky, so that's fine. Thigh swivel is fine. Double jointed knee, still fine. Ankle goes pretty far back and far enough forward and you get an ankle rocker. So it's still the same body with all the same problems and I don't really feel like much of it has been tweaked. It seems like some things might be slightly better but that might just be production variance. It's still not bad but it still needs work. So I'll give it a uh, seven out of 10 for articulation. Those hips being so limited going forward, not allowing Hulk to like step forward really sucks. Like that's as much range as you can go forward and even then it kicks the leg out to the side. Just trim away some of this. Just trim it like you could yourself do it at, at your own risk and with a parent supervision if you're a kid. But Hasbro, just trim some of that away. I mean, I know they're not gonna do that because they'd have to make a whole new mold, but let him step forward at least a little bit to do like a punching pose. Now he has to step to the side, which yeah, that's fine. Except these are action figures meant to be posed the way we want to and it's very limiting. So definitely not as good as it could be. Okay, final verdict on this guy. I'm being a little bit harsh because it's another repaint of the same body with no real extra effort put into it other than a little bit of extra paint. <sighs> it is what it is. Like, I'm sure most people weren't expecting it to be amazing. So I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. It's fine. It's fine. I would have given it an eight or a nine if it had a new head. Like that would have been enough for me because that would have been really cool to have the half and half head, but we don't have it and we don't have updated articulation. And the paints are good enough, so I like that, but no accessories, no articulation, no head. 
Yeah, 7 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.